Hello everybody. So with this problem we begin a new topic in our class um, and I will let you read this question the way that you see it right here. I've taken this screenshot directly from my math lab. If you're working the assignment you'll see the same question right here, perhaps different numbers. I'll let you read that. I just want to go into my own description of it um, which you can add to whatever you understand from reading the question as it is up there okay so here's how I would describe the question and some important features about it so the scenario is we have a ladder leaning against a wall and for whatever reason uh, maybe the base of the ladder doesn't have very good contact with the floor there's not much friction holding it in place the base slides away at seven feet per second okay or is sliding away at seven feet per second all right and what would happen is that the top would slide down and some other things about this picture here in this scenario would begin to change also okay so how about like this that's the scenario that's uh, how I think of it as it was described to me but in math uh, sometimes we uh, dismiss all non-essential aspects of a problem and just focus on what we're working with okay so I might redraw the scenario this way. I might see, see like, well, I don't really need the wall and the floor there. And, uh, you know, I can take it for granted that this red line right here represents the ladder that's leaning against the wall. I might just say that the situation in question forms a triangle, okay, where you could do like this. There's the ladder that's 25 feet long. That was given in the question. If you read it up here, it says a 25 foot ladder. Okay, so that means like I, if I imagine this is a triangle, that side's 25. And I notice that everything else about this problem is changing. If you say that the base of this ladder will slide away from the wall of the house, then that means that there's this side of the triangle, which I'll call X, which is changing, okay? And then as a result, if I see that there's the point of contact of the top of the ladder against the wall, the base of the ladder against the floor, forming a triangle, then this side right here, the distance from the floor to the top of the ladder, as it makes contact with the wall, is also changing. So it's like I got this triangle, I watch the base of the ladder slide out, I see the triangle that X is getting bigger, Y as a result is getting smaller, and I guess this angle right here that the ladder makes with the floor is also collapsing okay so you know if if you just tell me that i got this ladder leaning, leaning against the wall and the base begins to slide away at seven feet per second then that's the catalyst for all these other things i could measure about the situation to also change this distance is changing this distance is changing this angle is changing so let me summarize it like this so I've got this catalyst for change. The base of the ladder slides away at seven feet per second. And I'm given this extra condition, which I don't think is all that important right now, but the base of the ladder, when this happens, happens to be 24 feet away from the wall. So like X is 24 feet. And if you tell me the base slides away at seven feet per second, that's a derivative, that's a rate of change. Look at the units there, feet per second, feet over seconds, delta x over delta t, dx over dt, that's a derivative, okay? dx over dt is how x changes with time, and I was given that that's seven feet per second. So that's the catalyst for change in the situation, but here's those effects that I wanted you to think about, okay? y becomes a function of time. Okay, remember if X gets bigger, Y has got to get smaller moment by moment. And so I guess you could solve for DY over DT, which is what? How fast the top of the ladder is sliding towards the floor as a result of the base sliding away. Okay, so, so that's out there somewhere to be solved for. Also, I haven't mentioned the area yet, but if you see the ladder leaning against the wall as forming a triangle, then the area is also a function of time. You know, I'd say as the ladder uh, kind of goes like this, becomes more parallel to the floor as the base slides away, then that's going to squeeze out the area of the triangle that the ladder makes with the wall and the floor. So the area of that triangle is a function of time. It's changing moment by moment. 
So there's this derivative dA over dt that's somewhere out there that represents how fast the area is changing in time, how fast the area is changing moment by moment. We could solve for that. It's, this is all connected, so it seems like there has to be a way to know, right? This getting bigger causes the area definitively to get smaller. There's got to be some way to know how that's happening, okay? And theta, that angle there, is also a function of time. So we could d theta over dt is out there somewhere. d theta over dt is the derivative that tells me how this angle is changing in time. It tells me how it's changing moment by moment, okay? So think of, a, without doing any math, like I don't want to do any math just yet. I just want you to have like a kind of a common sense grasp of the situation that you'd say, sure, if this moves, it causes this to move, it causes the angle to change, it'll cause the area of that triangle to change too. It'll cause all these other things to change. Now, what we're after is how those other things are changing. If I know how fast one thing changes, can I figure out somehow how fast other things are changing that are effects of that, okay? All right, now, uh, just for maybe a little vocabulary, this type of problem is called a related rates problem, okay? So this is my first related rates problem that I'm showing you this semester. Okay, do you see why it's called related rates? What's a rate? Like a rate of change, like feet per second or square feet per second or degrees per second or something like that. Those are all rates of change. So I can see how they're related. I mean, over here I said that the base sliding away is a cause of these effects over here. But yeah, if, if you want to say it uh, real plainly, you can say dx over t, dt is representing how fast the ladder, ladder slides away from the house. It's related to dy over dt, how fast the top of the ladder slides down. And it's related to dA over dt, how fast the area of that triangle changes. And that's related to d theta over dt, how fast the angle changes, okay? So all those things are functions of time, all right? So functions is a concept that comes, a lot, uh, comes up a lot in calculus. And here, you know, x isn't just a number here. It's something that changes in time. It's a function of time. And so is y is a function of time. A for area is a function of time. And theta is a function of time. They're all changing moment by moment. They all depend on time. They all change in time. Okay. All right. Now, this is uh, just a summary of the information in this problem and how you might think about it. All right. And how... When I read this, nowhere up there does it say we have a derivative or we want a derivative, but the interpretation is, and the math will bear this out, that when you tell me, for example, the base of the ladder sliding away at seven feet per second, I know a derivative. I know dx over dt. And if I know the area is changing as a result in time, then I know there's this derivative dA over dt out there to be found somehow, okay? So that's where the derivatives come in. The derivatives come in because all the variables here that I've mentioned are functions of time. They're all changing with time. And those are basically derivative, those numbers that we either have or are looking for. All right, now I'm going to show you how you solve this in a separate video that I'll name part two. But for this one, uh, at least we understand, I hope, what we're reading here and how to understand the situation and maybe the very beginnings of how calculus might come into the solution.